Catherine from Living the Gourmet. How are you? Very well, Catherine. How are you? Oh, fine, thank you. Very good. Uh, and I wanted to thank you for visiting with Living the Gourmet. I'm speaking with Jake Monaco, and you are scoring the new Warner Brothers animation of Scooby-Doo and the Gourmet Ghost. So I am a huge Scooby-Doo fan. As a matter of fact, no, I am. I have my Scooby-Doo coffee mug in front of me as we speak. Oh. So. I love it. Now, do you have a Scooby-Doo apron? That's the question. No, I don't. I don't have a Scooby-Doo oh. apron, but I have a Scooby-Doo coffee mug. And it just, I love it. And it brings back lots of happy memories. My kids grew up with it. I loved it. So this was very nice and a really really fun opportunity for me because it's something that's dear to my heart. <laughs> so, so, and now it's incorporated with cooking, which is what I do, so it was better than me. I, exactly, two, two of your favorite things combined. <laughs> yeah, I mean really. So now tell us a little bit about this. Uh, the, the voices are Bobby Flay and Giada De Laurentiis. So that's very nice, and tell us about it. I, I did watch the trailer, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, it's a series of events. Um, uh, Fred is going to visit a relative of his, and it's at an old inn um, that's been around since colonial times that has been turned into a um, kind of a cooking arena of sorts, um, like a nice bed and breakfast. since cooking has been, uh, I guess, you know, it's kind of been elevated to a new form of almost, quote, stardom, you know, with the celebrity chefs and all. So, I mean, everybody knows Bobby Flay and Giada and whatnot. So it's, it's a whole new, it's a whole new world of celebrities with uh, the chefs today. Yes. So I'm sure that that... It will draw a lot of people uh, to see that. And uh, would you like to talk a little bit about the legacy of Scooby-Doo? Because I know it's been a cartoon that has been around for a long time uh, with the van and, you know, all the characters and whatnot, and it's just enjoyable. So. Absolutely. And I was definitely a fan of, you know, of the original show. I think when I first started getting into it, it was around uh, a name Scooby-Doo. And then um, being able to go back and see the original version from the from the seventies was great, um, and definitely pulled some um, sonic inspiration from the scores from the original series uh, that was somewhat jazz influenced. So bringing some of those elements back in for not only the series Be Cool Scooby Doo um, that's uh, gone on for the last couple of years, uh, but then also to bring it into this film uh, Gourmet Ghost. Well, Scooby, you know, Scooby Doo is like. Uh, Lucky Shaggy is kind of like a leftover with the van and the, and the, the whole persona is, you know, really left from the uh, hippie junior, you know, 60s and whatnot. So it probably did that influence your music at all. Well, and, and definitely, and you will also get the older audience because it, exactly for that reason, Scooby-Doo is such a, you know, a part of so many people's lives. So you're going to get a whole array of, of age groups to see it. You're going to get the cook, people who love to cook and the people who grew up with it. And did that influence your, 
your thought in how you would approach the music part of it? I mean, some parts, yes. Um, when Scooby and Shaggy kind of go off and have their, their hijinks uh, that they usually get involved in, um, it does tend to, the music tends to sh- go a little bit more in the, um, in the younger direction. However, during the rest of the parts, um, especially having to do with the mystery or having to do with the ghost, it tends to push the music in a slightly more mature way, and I think treating the music a little bit more seriously um, can help enhance the comedy in a lot of ways and make it feel slightly more mature in that respect. So it is more widely appealing to an older audience as well, you know, hopefully bringing back good and nostalgic memories from when an older, older audience, audience um, may have seen this back in the 70s, 80s, or any iteration between then and now. Right, with the classic rock, the glam rock, the whole, you know, it just spanned so many generations. So that that's um, that's good that you, you included all the age groups. <laughs> and now, um, so your music is featured in a lot of animation, I, I see, that uh, you have been doing a lot of, do you strictly do animation or or do you do other features as well? Um, I do all types of things. Um, it just so happens that over the course of the last few years, uh, my career path has kind of taken me down the road of animation, starting with uh, the show Dino Trucks, and then Be Cool Scooby Doo came in, and um, there's definitely been a lot of other animation projects, um, you know, in and out over the course of the last uh, ten years or so. Um, but it's, it, it's very nice to be able to kind of venture into the live action, more adult realm. Um, I, I love working on hard R comedies as well. Uh, you know, things like the absolutely fabulous movie um, that came out a couple years ago. I think a lot of that stuff is, is a lot of fun to embrace, and it's just a totally different style of writing and um, just a, a little bit more freedom in certain directions. Absolutely, and and especially now, I mean, so many people are doing voiceovers, so animation is very popular, and it does bring in a whole variety of age groups. Because simply, be, I mean, animation is not always for children, but a lot of people go to see the movie with their children if it is rated for children. And the music is really what gets you attached to a movie. I know when I would take my kids, sometimes I would love the scores and, and the music behind their movies that they saw. So you really are, are, are winning over many age groups, probably with the music. Yeah, for sure. So, um, now, do you love to eat too? <laughs> I absolutely love to eat. Oh, good, because... And I love, and I love to cook, so it, it, it was nice to, uh, well, to, brought in, to be brought in on this project. Well, do you know that music and, I'm sure, music and food go hand in hand. So you have good <laughs> music and good food, and you're set. You have a good, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, that's that's how I grew up. I grew up with music and food, and that's how my love for music, I mean, has been nurtured over the years. And then food, you just you can't have a good meal without having good music in the background. It just it enhances everything. And now. Do you what what do you do? You play piano or what is what is the your instrument of choice? I uh, started out playing guitar and that eventually evolved into anything that is kind of shaped like a guitar. So oh. instead of mandolin, ukulele, banjo. Oh my God! And I also have a bunch of you know like kind of traditional Greek instruments, um, but again all threaded instruments that can be plucked. Okay. Um, and then. Basically anything that I can bang on and make some sort of sound <laughs> with, um, it can be musical. Right. <laughs> well, it's funny, you know, I, I was always with piano, and you said mandolin, and I could remember growing up, you'd have your aunts and uncles, I come from an Italian family, and they would come in with, well, my also had guitar, but my aunt would come in with her little mandolin, and then she'd start playing, and you'd always have people break into song and it was just so much fun but i haven't heard the word mandolin for a long time 
So, and it's just a great instrument, and it just brings back so many memories. So that's that's nice that you said that. But now you're located in California. That's correct. Yes. Well, do you ever come? Well, if you ever come up to New York or Long Island, you're welcome to visit, and I'll cook you a meal. <laughs> That would be a pleasure. That would be a pleasure. And I wish you all the best with this movie and in your years to come. I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. And you've already got a fan of the movie and I haven't even seen it yet. But I know it'll be good. And thank you. Thank, and thank you so much. Is there a website that you'd like to mention that people could go to learn more about you and your music? Sure. Um, they can visit Jake. Uh www.jakemonaco.com. My last name is M O N A C O. And uh, there's a nice collection of music and different projects that I've worked on, everything ranging from the jazz stuff to small quirky ensembles to some large orchestral stuff. Wonderful. Well, thank you for visiting, and I hope that on your next project you'll visit again. Excellent. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, you're, you're welcome, and it was wonderful speaking with you. All the best. Bye-bye.